Apparently the train broke down over the Guadalupe Bridge. Service crew found it like this. Lots of blood, no bodies. And a pile of missing persons reports. Tabi tabi po. Greetings, young Tracy. Good evening, Nuno. Mabuhay, Earn Kapampangan, Luwid kayo! It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian. And if you are new to my channel, in this channel, I make videos about our people's history, our people's culture, and everything in between. So don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please subscribe! And for today's video, as many of you requested, I'll be doing a reaction to the new official trailer of Netflix animated series, Trece. Which of course is based on the Filipino graphic novel series created by Budgetan and artist Kajo Baldissimo. But before we begin, I, I actually have a confession. So I've actually seen, I've seen the trailer both in English and in Tagalog the day it came out. So I guess this will be more, um, you know, less of a reaction but more of a review from, from my perspective as a Filipino historian, as a Filipino in the diaspora, and as a Tagalog and Kapampangan culture bearer. And just like in the past, I'll be sharing what made me glad, what made me mad, what made me sad, and what I love about this trailer. Did I even love it? So without further ado, let's begin. Glad. So first, what made me glad? First, I am glad to see some familiar places in Metro Manila, like the Guadalupe Bridge in Makati. And even the way they depicted the MRT is actually pretty good. And I also saw Jollibee in a little billboard. And I'm really glad that a mainstream media giant like Netflix is investing in us. They're investing money in sharing our people's stories and mythologies. And the fact that they are also working closely with the Filipino creators to make sure it stays true to its source material is even better. A lot of times when media giants adapt stories from other cultures, cultures, you know, they tend to dilute or even misappropriate the culture. But so far, I don't see that here. I mean, of course, I have my own opinions about our own people's deeper mythologies that we don't usually see in the mainstream media, not even in the Philippines. Mythologies that many of us are not familiar with unless you grew up among culture bearers. But from what I've seen so far, I'm actually glad with the way they're depicted in this animated series. You know, it's really nice to see the stories we grew up with back in the motherland. It's nice to see them be put in the spotlight, not just locally, but internationally. Because sadly, many of our people are not familiar with our own mythologies, not even in the Philippines. A lot of Filipinos are more familiar with Western mythologies and even Western pop culture or Western comic books like the Marvel Universe or DC than our own. Unknown to many of us, Filipinos have a long history of our own comic books. You know from Jose Rizal's own Ang Pagong at Ang Machin back in the 1890s, to Daliwayway Magazine in the 1920s, to Darna and the other superheroes created by the amazing Mars Ravelo in the 1940s and 1950s. Actually, fun fact, the roots of Darna dates all the way back to the 1930s. So yes, our own Darna is actually way older than Wonder Woman. Because a lot of us, a lot of people think that Darna was a copycat of Wonder Woman. But the truth is, Darna was first created as Varga in the 1930s, years before Wonder Woman was created in the 1940s. So yes, I am glad that the world is finally now catching up to our own rich comic book universe and indigenous mythologies. So speaking of mythologies, Here's a short, short breakdown of the ones they've included in this trailer. Again, this is from my perspective as both a Tagalog and a Kapampangan culture bearer. So if you're from other cultures in the Philippines, if you're from the Visayas, the Ilocos region, Mindanao, or any part of the Philippines, share your own perspective from your own cultures in the comments below. So without further ado, in no particular order, first is the Nuno. As mentioned in my other videos, the Nuno Sapunso were not the little mischievous dwarves or goblins that we are familiar with today. According to the Kapampangan mythology, the original Nuno were the spirits of our ancestors. The ancestral spirits that our elders and their own ancestors once worshipped and respected. They were never feared the way we fear the modern day Nuno Sapunso. That fear of the Nuno and their, you know, mischievous appearance only emerged as a result of colonialism and the vilifying of our indigenous spiritual beliefs. 
And if you haven't noticed it yet, the word Nuno is actually closely related to the word Ninuno, which means ancestor in Tagalog. So if you want to learn more about the Nuno, check out the links up here or down, down below for my videos, my other videos that talks about the mythologies around the Nuno, sa punso or Nu, or Ninuno. Check out the links up here or down below. But first, let's move on to Tabi-Tabi Po. Back before colonialism, Tabi-Tabi Po in Tagalog or Pasintabi in Kapampangan is actually respectfully asking for the blessing and the permission from the ancestral spirits and the other beings around us. Tabi in the oldest known surviving Kapampangan dictionary is actually defined as respectfully seeking permission and it has a lot to do with deference and veneration. So as opposed to what many assume today, Tabi Tabi Po doesn't simply mean excuse me because many think it came from the word Tabe or to move aside in Tagalog. Tabi Tabi Po is not about asking the enchanted beings to move aside while we walk by or pee outdoors but actually it is respectful respectfully seeking their permission and their blessing. In fact, in the indigenous Kapampangan architecture, we have a lot of pasintabi to the spirits and the elements. These are rules about the flow and maintaining harmony. So you cannot just build a house however you want it. You have to follow certain rules and seek the permission and the blessing from the spirits and the elements. Next is the Chana. In Tagalog mythology and also in the mainstream pop culture in the Philippines, Chanaks are the vampire-like ghosts or monsters of the babies or toddlers, usually the unborn child or a child who was a victim of suffering and violence and gruesome death. But this concept of Chanak is actually related to other mythologies like from the Kapampangan and all the way to Indonesia. So in Bahasa Melayu or Bahasa Indonesia, they actually have Ponchanak. Ponchanaks are believed to be the spirits of women who died while pregnant. As opposed to the unborn child in Tagalog mythology, in Melayu, it is the spirits of the mothers who were killed while they were pregnant. And this is actually very similar to the Kapampangan Pachanak. Just like the Melayu Ponchanak, the Pachanak in Kapampangan mythology are the vengeful ghosts of women who died at childbirth. But sadly, younger Kapampangans today are more familiar with the Tagalog Chanak than the Kapampangan Pachana. Some people actually think that the Pachanak in Kapampangan is exactly the same as the unborn ghost called Chanak in Tagalog. So in both the Melayu mythology and the Kapampangan mythology, the Ponchanak and the Pachanak are the vengeful ghosts of the mothers who died at childbirth. Actually, in the Pampanga mythology, we also have something called the Anchanak, which is actually not the same as the Chanak or the Pachanak. They're different. Anchanaks were believed to be one of the oldest race of beings here on Earth. They grow up to 12 inches in height, but they look exactly like us humans, only smaller. And they were believed to have an ancient but advanced civilization. They were able to communicate with the trees, the animals, the spirits around us, and even that of the winds and the water. In other words, they were really small beings who look like humans but extremely powerful. Some are benevolent while others are evil. So for our modern day pop culture reference, they were somewhat similar to the children of the forest in the Game of Thrones. And now that I think about it, they actually have a lot of similarities with our modern-day Filipino concept of the duende. You know, some were benevol benevolent, some were benevolent, while some were malevolent or evil. Next up is the babaylang mandirigma. I'm glad that the protagonist is a babaylang. Babaylands have been vilified for centuries. They were once the beloved spiritual leaders and healers in our communities. But after colonialism, they were vilified as evil witches or even demons. They were hunted down and killed. Some babaylands were literally chopped up and fed to the crocodiles. The babaylands in the Visayas or the Catalonan of the Tagalogs or what we also call the Mamaluyan and the Katulunan in Kapampangan were at the pinnacle of our pre-colonial society. They were the bridge between us humans and the spiritual realms. 
Mamaluyan in Kapampangan literally means the vessels of the Diwatas, the vessels of the gods and the goddesses, the deities of our ancestors. So let me know in the comments below if you would like to see a separate video about the Babaylans. I also love that her primary weapon is a Kris. I believe I also saw a Kampilan. But for now, let's talk more about the Kris, also known as Kalis in Kapampangan or Keris in other languages. As I've mentioned before, a Keris, a Kalis, or Kris is a highly spiritual sword, a highly magical sword, a very powerful sword filled with mythology in the many cultures of Southeast Asia. It is even believed that each Chris or Kalis have their own spirits and each Chris have their own special powers like warding off evil spirits and killing evil beings. The Chris are also used and believed to protect our homes. These are also passed down from one generation to the next like my own heirloom Kalis. And in our culture, one cannot just carry or own a Chris or Kalis. In Luzon or pre-colonial Luzon, only the Datos and the Mapyang Sugi or those with royal blood can own and carry or wear their own Kalis. The only exceptions to this rule were the spiritual leaders, the priestly class of Luzon, the priestesses and the priests of our ancestors. And yes, this included trans people who were revered as valued and highly spiritual members of our society. They may also own and carry their own Chris or Kalis. But maybe in the future, I'll expand more on the fascinating mythologies surrounding the Chris or Kalis or Keris, both in the Philippines and across the different cultures of Southeast Asia. And you can also watch my videos, my reactions to Raya and the Last Dragon to learn more about this fascinating and uniquely Southeast Asian sword. Now let's move on to Lakan. Today, Lakan is understood by many to simply mean a noble person. But the original Lakans were actually the gods and the demigods of our ancestors. The word Lakan is actually the title of both the Diwatas or the gods and their descendants on earth or the demigods. They were the Devarajas or the god kings or god queens on earth because Lakan is actually gender neutral. And the Lakans were the paramount kings or queens of Luzon or Lusong. But apart from the paramount king or queen, Lakan is also used as a title for those who were descendants of the Lakans but may not have political power as the ruling king, but nevertheless have a particular significant role and powerful position in society. So not everyone with the blood of the Lakan can simply assume the title of Lakan. One would have to prove themselves worthy of the title. And Lacan titles are actually more poetic and unique to the person it is bestowed upon. Lacan titles are more spiritual and philosophical. For example, calling me Lacan Kirby would actually be wrong. My Lacan title actually embodies my damla, which is hard to explain in English, but basically my purpose here on earth and the principles I live by and my responsibilities to the community. So if you want to learn more about the term Lacan and other ancient terms and titles, check out my other videos in the links up here or down below. Or get a copy of my new book, Know Our Roots Number 1, about Tondo, Slavery, and the Revolt of the Lacans. Check out the links below. And yes, I'm excited to see how they're gonna define and explore the word Lacan in this series. Because you know, not everyone is familiar with the original meaning and purpose of the title Lacan. Mad. I'm mad excited about Trece. As someone who grew up watching animations mostly from Japan and the United States, I'm excited to see a well-made animation about our people. I mean, like I mentioned in the past, Filipinos have always been some of the most talented animators and comic book creators throughout history. But rarely do we see our own stories in the mainstream, so this is really exciting. And I do hope that it opens up more doors for our talents and artists to be recognized and be admired worldwide. 
and I'm also very excited to see more of the world of Trece, like what other mythological beings they will feature and explore. I haven't read the original graphic novels yet, so I'm really excited to see more. Sad. Sad that it took this long for something like this to come out. And I'm sad that a lot of people, many people, are actually very critical of the Tagalog version of the trailer, saying that it does not sound natural, saying that it sounded awkward. But let me tell you this, as someone who fluently speaks many languages, and someone who has seen animations in many different languages, I honestly think that they did a pretty good job. Perhaps it sounded awkward to many because we are not as exposed to seeing animations in our own languages. I've seen animations in other languages like English or Spanish that sounded really awkward but not in Trece. So yes, it makes me sad that we don't have enough animations in our mother tongues, not just Tagalog, but I'd love to see more of our languages be featured in our mainstream media. I want to see more animations in Tagalog, Kapampangan, Binisaya, Bicolnon, Iloko, even Magindanawan, Melanao, Tausug, Ifugao, Pangasinan, and many more. Let us celebrate the beauty and the rich diversity of our languages instead of bashing our own mother tongues. Love. So what did I love about it? Did I even love it? Did I even like it? Like I said, I'm excited to see this animated series. I loved how the trailer gave you enough to want to see more. I also love that there is a strong female lead. Just like how our ancestors had strong women leaders. Fierce ancient women who led our communities. So if you want to learn more about the amazing fierce women of ancient Southeast Asia, check out my playlist in the links down below. Or you can also pre-order my book and coloring book on the fierce women of ancient Southeast Asia. I'll include the links down below. But the line, the part that I love the most in this trailer is... There was a time when magic in the world was a natural part of life. That age has passed. People fear what they don't understand. People fear what they don't understand. It reminds us of how our mythologies were vilified by racism and colonialism and how the miseducation of our people led to many of us today not having an understanding of our own roots. How colonialism and miseducation weaponized our own mythologies against us. Many of us don't really understand our own mythologies. That is why today many of us fear the Nuno. Unlike back in the day when our ancestors respected and venerated the Nuno as our benevolent ancestral spirits. Spirits who are actually instrumental in keeping the balance in both the physical world and the spiritual realms. This could also apply to how racism is spreading like wildfire today. It is mostly rooted in the spreading of fear and the lack of understanding of those who may appear different from us. So to end this video, let us all give Trece a chance. It is an amazing opportunity for the rest of the world to see our culture, to learn more about our rich mythologies. I'm excited for more Filipinos who were born in the diaspora to learn more about our culture and our people. It is exciting that we have this on a global platform. But I also hope that this would also open more opportunities for more of our stories to be told by us. And not just in the mainstream international media giants like Netflix or Disney, but also invest in our own local media and talented people back in the motherland. And I'll leave it at that. So let us know, let me know in the comments below what you think about the trailer. And please, please share what you know about the mythologies from your own cultures in the comments below. Again, I shared what I know from my upbringing as a Tagalog and a Kapampangan culture bearer. So please let us know, we'd love to learn more about your cultures. Let us know in the comments below. And of course, before we go, today's shout out goes to 
Kairos from Thailand, Veronica Bertiz from Montreal, Hafiz from Melaka in Malaysia, Marco Angelo from the Philippines, and special shout out to Marcy Taylor from LA. Check out our hour-long conversation about Trece with younger Filipino Americans in the links down below. And that is it for me today. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please subscribe. And special thanks to all my patrons for helping me make more videos like this. And for those who want to help me make more videos like this, show your support and please, please be my patron or get a copy of any of my books or coloring books or any of the merch link down below. Maraming maraming salamat po. Daghang salamat, agyaman, terima kasi, dakalpong salamat, magsukol. Thank you! <laughs> maraming maraming salamat po. See you next time or in Tagalog, kita kits, and ikapampangan. Miki Ticks! There was a time when magic in the world was a natural part of life. That age has passed. Ah! Let's put an end to it.